This is a Skywatcher SkyMax 150mm uh, Maxatov telescope. Uh, it's around 7 kg with the uh, diagonal eyepiece and uh, finder. This finder I've added of my own. And uh, it's a right angle finder, so easy to look at. But the problem with this uh, telescope and everywhere I have seen is that they say that it needs a very robust heavier mount like EQ5 or above. I tried, I read in one of the uh, astronomy uh, forums that actually you can use the tripod for a sky watcher uh, flex tube. Uh, the Epsonian mount. I show you the telescope itself, the box of it. You will remember. That's the telescope I'm referring to. And for the International Year of Astronomy 2009, a special edition. This Epsonian mount here that you can see at the center is the one I'm using. I must say it looks quite impressive on this mount. And. Uh, the only worry is that uh, will it actually take a long time to dampen the vibrations that uh, happen when you touch the telescope or a mount or can it do it quick enough in under four minutes four seconds sorry okay as you can see i can turn the mount can move the tube up and down. It's quite a heavy beast. Yeah, it's beautiful. And um, yeah, I may have found the solution for this uh, the mount of this telescope. Uh, the, the thing is that when you have a telescope, a heavy weight, anything, at a height, that introduces vibration naturally. So if you get it lower, the vibration will be reduced. The height of it is less. So let's hope that this will work. Okay, this is the eyepiece that came with this telescope. It's lightweight, but it's two inch. So the good thing about this also is that this is two inch, the barrel and the diagonal. So let me install it and see how it is. The, the eyepiece is lightweight. This one is lightweight. I have heavier than that, with half a kilo or more. So it's better to use a lightweight one just to see how it is. Okay, I've now installed the eyepiece. And uh, of course, uh, I have to remove the lens cap, the front cap. You can take a look here. The telescope is not balanced at this stage. So I'm going now to move it along so as to make it a little bit balanced. Okay. The eyepiece added some weight to it, so I had to balance it. I moved it slightly toward this direction, so the weight in this direction will be equal to the weight this direction. That's the fulcrum, uh, the center of the gravity, you can call it also. And hopefully that will stay, so I can move it up and down, and to the left and right. So let me target something. Um, actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed by the performance uh, at this stage because this tube, as you know, Microsoft needs to be cooling down, to acclimatize, as they say, uh, acclimatize. So, well, because this side of it is enclosed, there is a meniscus here, and this side of it is a mirror and a casing, and this side of it is a tube. Okay, this, there is convection currents inside of it. Maybe is a different temperature to the outside environment until they reach the the equilibrium, which takes around anything between one, half an hour to one hour, they will have some convection currents inside it. So what will happen is that you will see some turbulence 
and it's a telescope, large telescope, air turbulence will be magnified in whatever it is. So you have to let it cool down. But for the short period of time that I was able to actually video this, I was impressed. The vibrations you saw is not because of the vibration in the telescopes, uh, current, well, my hands shaking, moving, because this is a, um, a very, uh, not very wide angle lens, as you can see. The eye pupil is quite a small. And uh, so I'm impressed. What I'm impressed more than anything else is the focuser in this telescope, how good it is, how smooth it is to turn it. So nice feeling in this. This looks almost like that uh, 48 inch uh, Palomar uh, Maxotov that they have there They're using it. It's really quite respectful scientific instrument. And okay, I will invest eventually probably in one good mount for this, but at the moment that's that's perfect. That works with this ultrazimut mount and as a tabletop telescope. You cannot probably use it all the time inside the house because you will never get rich there. You know, you waste your energy, of course, you can see that. Uh, but for the short distance that I'm looking at that hedge, it actually was giving me a good view. And of course, if there isn't a moon or anything outside, I can watch with this. So far, so good. Uh, solution for a big problem found. Uh, <laughs> a cheap Dobsonian mount will do the job. Okay, I've now installed my Max Vision uh, 68 degrees 34 millimeter uh, eyepiece. There's a very wide uh, viewing angle. I was, I was really impressed with the image quality on this one. I'm holding the camera. I'm looking forward. That shows the difference between a cheap eyepiece and a good quality eyepiece. I think I will use the Max Vision with this. It goes better, it gives a better result. It looks heavier, adds at least uh, <laughs> half a kilo to the weight. But what the heck, that's a good, good, good telescope. Needs good eyepiece. The telescope is as is as good as his eyepiece and mount and optical and collimation and everything else. <laughs> Is a mad hobby. <laughs> now put the telescope in the rest position. As you can see, the ball bearing here is really holding well so far, hopefully. And just ending this video with the comparison between the two inch uh, eyepiece 28 millimeter that came with the telescope and the Max Vision eyepiece. Sometimes the size probably matters. And as an extra measure, I lower the tube. So it will not touch, but just be close enough to the bottom of the base of the Dobsonian mount. We will see how it will all done. So far, so good. It's a big... Uh, scientific instrument. And let's see what's with the telescope. Oh, it's reverse. The important part of this uh, Dobsonian mount is this ball bearing here and the head, ball head, which is this part, and it's holding to it. This has the capacity for 10 kilograms of red, 
so we must be able to hold this seven kilogram with the IP is seven and a half kilogram. The telescope itself is around five, five half past five, and sorry, five and a half or six kilograms, with the addition of the uh, eyepiece and the diagonal and the finder, it increases to seven, seven and a half, half a kilo of the eyepiece, if you use the max vision heavy eyepiece, that will increase it to around eight kilograms, yet within the limit of this, but the best tense comes when we observe something like the moon. But this is the biggest telescope you can have probably on the, on the Dobsonian mount, on the tabletop.